You get dickheads in any society. I never said that I thought it would be bad. Are you high now? Yeah. Hey, Tom Tilly with you for Hack. It's Friday, baby, so get your phones ready. Let's riff on the big stories of the week. Yasmin abdel McGee suggested that Australians should spare thought for those on Manus Island instead of Anzacs. She's completely out of touch. Hack. Triple J. Love to know which story got you talking this week. We've already got a text. Lee from Brisbane says, I'm a young veteran who served in Afghanistan and nothing infuriates me more than other people using the service of myself and my fellow veterans as a platform to promote their own beliefs and agendas. Love to know what you think on that topic. one 300 56 And in the studio today, we actually have a young veteran. His name is Chris May. He did two tours in Afghanistan. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate our, it. Our other guest today is Clementine Ford, a feminist writer and who also wrote a, an article supporting Yasmin Abdel-Majid, who is in the middle of this furor. Clem, thanks so much for being back on the show. Thanks for having me, Tom. All right, let's get straight into this first big story. Uh, in case you missed the story about Yasmin Abdel-Majid, let's find out who she is, what she said and why it made so many people so angry. Yasmin Abdelmajid is a Sudanese-born Australian mechanical engineer and she started the organisation Youth Without Borders when she was just 16. She's also written a book called Yasmin's Story about growing up Muslim in Australia and she hosts Australia Wide on the ABC. She's seen as a young Muslim leader and activist and so she's on advisory boards and she's done lots of media, including being a familiar voice here on The Shaker. And Muslim writer, engineer, youth advocate, Yasmin Abdel-Majid. Welcome to the show, guys. What's up? It's been a really big year. Uh, So I published a book, which is kind of like about my life and growing up and part of it was... But she may not have heard too much about her until earlier this year when this happened. Anybody that supports Sharia law in this country should be deported. So do you know what Sharia law is? Yes, but it doesn't what, have Do you know advice? what it is? Yasmin was on the ABC show Q&A when she got into an intense argument with the federal senator, Jackie Lambie, about Sharia law. You tell me why. Don't tell me why. Don't tell me why. Don't tell me why. Don't tell me why. Her comments about Islam and feminism set off a landslide of criticism and plenty of opinion pieces and front pages. But she also got a lot of fans, including the other famous Noel sister, Solange, who tweeted, Yasmin Abdel-Majid, you made my morning. And now Yasmin's back in the headlines this week for a Facebook post that she wrote on Anzac Day. Lest we forget Manus, Nauru. Syria, Palestine. She deleted the last part of it after people called her out. But there are petitions again for the ABC to fire her and for her to be taken off the Council of Arab Australian Relations. And it's unleashed the commenters online. Anzac Day is sacred and no real Australian messes with it or dishonours it. You hijacked it with your own political agenda. You are not Australian. You are an utter disgrace. Lest we forget the real Anzacs. I think this animal has lost all rights after yesterday's display of patriotic speech in reference to our fallen soldiers. How is this thing still employed? And again, she's a subject of tons of op-eds in the papers, online, and even the Prime Minister has weighed in. Recognised she'd made a very serious error of judgement she, as I understand it, she took the tweet down and deleted it and apologised okay. as she should have done and she should very carefully reflect on that error of judgement. This is the idiot who uh, tweeted, who Facebooked yesterday, lest we forget all the rest of it. Um... But I still support her right to freedom oh, of speech. 100%. And, and, um, and, and my right to be able to turn around and say, lest we forget, Yasmin, that you are brown, you are Muslim and you are a girl and that's the only reason you have a job at the ABC. <laughs> Hack Triple J. Love to hear your reaction. Joe from Fernie Creek says, Remember two weeks ago when everyone wanted to change 18C? I guess freedom of speech is only for middle-aged white men, hey? Uh, someone else says, Much respect for Chris, who is our guest today. Very brave and noble cause, and Chris served in Afghanistan. All right, love to hear what you think. Give me a call, one 536 What do you think of Yasmin's comments, and what do you think of the backlash? That number again, one 536 All right, Chris, as a soldier who served, can you explain to everyone listening why Anzac Day is so important but also so sensitive? 
Uh, Anzac Day is one of those one of those days. It, it, of course, it commemorates the hundredth, hundred and second anniversary of the, um, the Anzacs landing on the beaches of Gallipoli. But it's not just that; it's what happened since then. You know, the battles on the Western Front, all the way through Kokoda. Um, you know, you're looking at Vietnam, all the way through to East Timor. You know, our services in Rwanda and Somalia, all the way through to now when we're serving in Afghanistan. It's not. It's a day for commemoration for everything, um, and we look back, and, and those of us veterans that are still alive look back on those conflicts, and we think about our mates because that's the important part. It's our mates that never got the opportunity to come home, um, and the, you know the men and women that signed up to volunteer their time, their lives uh, to the country, so that we do have that freedom of speech and, and and the country we live in today, which is a beautiful country. So it's that's Anzac Day is it's a it's a it's supposed to be a commemoration. You, you wake up, you go to the dawn service, you reflect on the sacrifices made of those Anzacs at Gallipoli, which forged our name in history. And then the aftermarks of that, you know, the rest of our services throughout the years. And for me personally, it's a, it's a day where I remember my mates that didn't come home from Afghanistan. And I know for all of, uh, you know, the listeners that have served in Afghanistan, Iraq, East Timor, it's a day for them to remember their mates too. And, you know, the thoughts of what they have to go through now, and it, it's their day, and it's it's just a day to remember. Yeah, and we've got um, Clem Ford and her baby in the studio who you can hear um, having a, a great time. Don't think she's um, aware of Anzac Day just yet, but she will be one day. Um, so what, what feelings are going through you on that day when you, I guess, you're remembering all those former soldiers and mates of yours? Uh, there, there isn't a moment that uh, you're not... You're not thinking about your mates and the sacrifices. Uh, in 2013, I was in France, standing at Villas Bretonneau, and there are 25,000 names on the wall of soldiers who still lie on a foreign battlefield. And you look at the names and, you know, you just think, those guys never got to go home. And that's, that, that's an entire generation of Australians that were massacred um, uh, on the Western Front. And, you, you know, we really... We did it. We did forge our name on that Western Front, and then you come back to Australia, and we have our moments. And for me, like I hear the last post, and the last post rings through my heart, and it just uh, it invokes emotion. You know, the, the eyes start to well up, you start to tear up, and you think about the sacrifice you made. When I joined up, I was seventeen. When I was in Afghanistan, I was nineteen. You know, my mates were still at school, at uni, and uh, you know, most of them living with their parents, and I was in Afghanistan. And um, that was my choice. I decided to do that. I volunteered to do that. Mm. I even asked my parents to sign me over at, at 17 because you have to have guardian's wow. consent. So, and I said, this is what I want to do. And we all wanted to do our bit. And um, that's to safeguard what we do here, you know, our beautiful country. And so how did you feel when you saw a, a public figure making a comment like Yasmin did? Uh, to be honest, I, was, I, was, I saw it on my phone on Facebook. Uh, I was scrolling through. I saw the comment. And I do what I do with most news articles where it invokes that sort of negative emotion, and I kind of rolled my eyes and went, oh, here we go, it's going to start something. And it did. Um, I, I read it for what it was, you know, lest we forget and, and so on. And then, um, you know, it was taken down. I read the news articles all about it. But at the end of the day, you know, I've seen how much backlash there has been. So there's been enough negative comments and enough positive comments thrown at, at um, you know, at the comment itself. I'm not going to weigh in on it. I just, I can't let it, you know, I've got my own troubles as it is, so I don't need to let this build up and put weight on my shoulders. So I try and try not let it get to me. Clem, you came out supporting Yasmin. What made you want to do that? Well, firstly, um, before I begin, I'd just like to say, Chris, it's, it's really a great honour to meet you. I respect anyone who goes out and pursues their dreams, and I thank you for your service as well. Thanks. I can't imagine how frightening that must have been at, at different points, and... I think that what you've been through, particularly over 10 years, particularly over 10 years of service, um, must have had a huge impact on you. So I, I appreciate and respect that you would have had those emotions when you saw that comment. Um, the reason that I came out in support of Yasmin is not because I hate Anzacs. It's not because mm. I hate the military and it's not because I hate the service that people have provided. Um, but I think that what is being missed here is what her intent was and and that's separate from how people may have interpreted that i don't think that what she was saying in seven simple words was um not only not intended to be dis disparaging towards australia's service people but i don't even think it was i think that what she was saying was this is a day of remembrance this is a day where we rem remember the sacrifices that were made um and the loss of life that has been experienced as a result of military conflicts 
and that conflict is ongoing around the world today. That that trauma and that horrendous loss of life is continuing now. And as a country, we have the power to create change in those areas. And I think that that's what she was saying. I think that actually what she was doing, many people will disagree with this assessment, mm. but I think what she was doing was paying respect to the enormity and the gravity of war and the loss of life that comes from that. And what I find... What I find most disrespectful about it, actually, is that um, if it had just been left on her page or if she just deleted it and it had been left like that, that it, it would have been an issue that had disappeared. But it's been taken and used by people who... It's funny that people are saying, you know, Anzac Day is not a day for politics. Whether or not you believe that's true or not, it's been taken by people who are making that argument and using it as a political point in order to galvanise sentiment against a particular kind of woman in this country to galvanise hatred towards her and it has been enormously effective. Yes, there are people who are expressing their disagreement with Yasmin in a way that is um, maybe not even you, you don't even need to use the word respectful but there's just saying, look, I disagree with you or I'm, you know, that's a stupid thing to say or whatever it might be but then there are other people who are saying things like as someone said on my page about her that she should be beaten and sodomised that she should be hanged in the street, that she should be stoned, she should be beheaded. All of these things that we supposedly pride ourselves on as an Australian nation of freedom, that we don't do those things. We are, we are civilised. We don't behave that way towards people who express their freedom of speech. And there are people who are gleefully suggesting that, well, maybe we should. In the same breath as saying that the reason that what she said was so offensive was because she is violating the sacrifice that was made in order to give us that freedom. So I feel like there's a lot of hypocrisy going on. And I would make the argument, Chris, you may or may not think that this is genuine, I would make the argument that that, that is immensely disrespectful to the seriousness of conflicts and to the people who have put their hands up to go and participate in them for what they believe is right. All right, let's go to the listeners. Carolina, what's your reaction? Um, I don't necessarily agree with what Yasmin has said. I definitely agree with what Clement said. I think that's what, what she, she intended with that. But I... 100% reckon if she wasn't Muslim, a person of colour and a woman, she would not be getting dragged through the mud so severely. Right, so you're, I guess, saying that people don't like her for those other things, that she's and a woman and she's a Muslim be, and she, they're using this as an excuse to be, act out those feelings? 100%. Let's be real. The majority of Australia does not view Yasmin as an Australian. What do you mean That's by that? What I think. The, the what the mainstream it, Australia don't see her as an Australian because she yeah was if it was a white family. middle-aged male that tweeted that no one would have blinked an eye well yeah, I don't know if that I don't know if that's true because two years ago Scott McIntyre from SBS got fired for comments he made about Anzac Day I just think the way she's being treated right now and what people are saying about her comments is only because of those three things all right great.